and implementation of the role directives to provide urgent humanitarian aid to the Palestinian people in Gaza. Two shipments of urgent relief materials were sent in cooperation with the Royal Humanitarian Foundation and the Bahrain Defense Force, where the Amr ibn al-As operation was implemented to land Bahraini and aid in Gaza in cooperation with the Royal Jordanian Air Force. On this occasion, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, extended thanks, appreciation, and gratitude to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Honorary President of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, for His Majesty's continued humanitarian initiatives in aiding and providing relief to those in need in various parts of the world. His Highness praised the support that the Royal Humanitarian Foundation receives from the esteemed government headed by the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, stressing that the Royal Humanitarian Foundation is honored to implement the directives of His Majesty the King. His Highness Sheikh Nasser noted that the Kingdom of Bahrain continues to support and assist the Palestinian people in Gaza based on its firm position towards the just Palestinian cause and its fraternal and humanitarian duty towards what the people in Gaza are suffering as a result of the ongoing war. For his part, the Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, stated that an implementation of the Royal Directives and under the leadership of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Humanitarian Foundation prepared two shipments of relief aid in two Royal Bahraini Air Force aircraft with the Bahrain Defense Force. The Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation said that the shipment comes as a continuation of the work of the Bahraini Committee to support the Palestinian people in Gaza in cooperation with the Bahraini Red Crescent Society, the Humanitarian CAF Society, the Islamic Education Society, and the Islamic Society, calling on everyone to contribute with the Royal Humanitarian Foundation in unifying the efforts to provide support and assistance to the Palestinian people. In the presence of the Vice President of the Supreme Council for Environment, Deputy Chairman of the Rajd Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, Supreme Committee and member of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sport, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa. The Royal, the club organized today the 25th meet of the season over SDC Bahrain Cups at its race course in Al Rafa Sakhir. The race saw the attendance of a number of their highnesses, sponsors, representatives, and equestrian sport enthusiasts. Winners of the Cups were announced and the Deputy Chief Executive Officer of Government Affairs of SDC Bahrain Sheikh Ziyad bin Faisal Al Khalifa presented the 8th round trophy of Bahrain Gold Cup to Hussein Al Afu as well as the 4th, 6th and 7th round trophies to the winning trainer's assistant Mohammed Haider, the winning trainer A.M. Smith and His Highness Sheikh Hashim bin Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa respectively. Meanwhile, the Deputy Chief of Human Resources of STC Bahrain, Fahad Al Awaini, presented the first and second round trophies to the winning trainer Yusuf Tahir and the winning owner Mohammed Sarhan, respectively. Chief Strategy Officer of STC Bahrain, Imran Aslam, presented the third round trophy to His Highness Sheikh Hashim bin Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa, while the Chief Finance Officer of STC Bahrain, Ahmed Al Jowdar presented the fifth round trophy to the winning owner, Sheikh Ibrahim bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. In addition, the members of STC Bahrain management presented the audience prizes which were drawn during the race.
Two Seas Motorsport team, owned by His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, is to extend its 2024 racing plan with an exciting addition, confirming a debut entry into the Fanatic GT World Challenge Europe, powered by AWS Endurance Cup. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah said that this is an exciting new challenge for the team and for him personally. He said his team has shown that they can do more than compete with the best. He highlighted that the GT World Challenge Europe has become the performance benchmark for drivers, teams and manufacturers and attracts the best in the world. The reigning British GT teams champion will run with the Mercedes AMG GT3 in the, world, in the Gold Cup, driven by His Highness Sheikh Isa Al Khalifa, Bahrain, Lewis Williamson from Scotland and Martin Kodrich from Croatia. The championship will compete across Europe before the final round heads to the Middle East for the inaugural round in Saudi Arabia. Double Golf 12 Hours champion His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah will make his European race debut and the 2024 calendar follows on from his successful podium result in Yas Marina at the end of last season. His Highness expressed happiness being able to ride with Lewis and Martin, two hugely experienced and quick drivers, adding that they are aiming for strong results straight out of the box when they arrive at Paul Ricard circuit in France. Teams participating in the Formula One race will undergo a final round of testing today before the highly anticipated first round at the Bahrain International Circuit, the home of motorsport in the Middle East. The Mercedes team, through its British driver Lewis Hamilton, topped the second practice session at the 2024 Formula One Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix. In the trials, which lasted for a full hour, the teams tested different patterns, such as speed runs to simulate qualifying or staying at one rhythm to simulate the race. The Swedish Prima racing driver Dino Beganovic took the lead in qualifying in the first round of qualifying for Formula 3, which is part of the Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix. In addition, Indian Kush Miani from the Invicta racing team grabbed the first starting position in the Formula 2 championship during the qualifying session that was held on Thursday for the opening support round of the 2024 Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix. Driver Harry King advanced the fastest time in the second testing session of the Porsche Carrera Cup Middle East Championship in the fifth and penultimate round. The tenders and auctions board obtained the Certificate of Accreditation for Ethical Procurement for Organizations, issued by the Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply, SIPS, after its members completed training and passed examination in a number of areas of ethical procurement and supply management. On this occasion, the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Chairman of the Tenders and Auctions Board, Mr. Yasser bin Ibrahim Hamidan affirmed the tenders and auctions board obtaining the certificate reflects its firm commitment to maintaining the highest standards of integrity and transparency in managing procurement operations effectively and efficiently and highlights the strategy it is pursuing in continuing to follow the best international practices in the procurement and supply sector. The Minister of Education and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Higher Education Council, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak Juma, met with the Minister of Education of Saudi Arabia, Dr. Yusuf Al Binyan. The meeting was held on the sideline of the Human Capability Initiative Conference held under the patronage of the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. The two sides discussed the process of drafting a memorandum of understanding for education and higher education aimed at enhancing cooperation in the fields of scientific research, exchange of expertise, and joining of educational institutions. The minister affirmed the historical long-standing bahraini saudi relations and the advanced cooperation in various sectors, especially in education. The Minister of Education and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Higher Education Council, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak Juma, participated as a keynote speaker in the dialogue se session on education and its outcomes within the Human Capability Initiative Conference, held under the patronage of the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. 
The session focused on educational outcomes and the value of educational data in the decision-making process. The minister outlined Bahrain's education process in dealing with educational data and statistics, including international test results and how they can be used to analyze school curricula, teaching methods and student levels. Dr. Juma highlighted the mechanisms for training teachers and the challenges educational systems face when addressing the details of academic achievement processes within the classrooms, as well as the importance of feedback when dealing with students' individual differences. The Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah al Naimi, launched the Manama, the capital of Arab Media 2024 logo, at a ceremony held at the Ministry of Information in the presence of a number of heads and representatives of Arab diplomatic missions, Bahraini Journalists Association Board, editors in chief of local newspapers, and a number of Arab media figures and journalists who are in Bahrain to participate in the Formula One Bahrain Grand Prix 2024. The Minister affirmed that the selection of Manama as the capital of Arab Media 2024 came as an Arab appreciation for the leading regional and international status achieved by the media sector in Bahrain and the development it witnesses at all levels in light of the directives of His Majesty the King with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He added that the decision of the Arab Information Minister's Council during its 53rd session held in Rabat, Morocco to select Manama to host the event reflects the trust in Bahrain's capabilities and media potential, uh, potentials as well as the admiration for its keenness on providing a media message that adheres to professional ethics, protects the Arab and Islamic identity, and defends just Arab causes. Dr. Al Naimi affirmed that Bahrain is witnessing wide range media development during the era of His Majesty the King, derived from the freedom and openness prompted by the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King, which provided the media sector with further space for expression in a context of national responsibility and enhanced the role of media platforms towards society. The minister expressed appreciation for the General Secretariat of the Arab League and the Arab Information Minister's Council for selecting Manama as the capital of Arab media and for their continuous support and coordination with the ministry to ensure the success of the event. The Supreme Council for Women participated in the work of the 43rd session of the Arab Women's Committee of the League of Arab States. Dr. Fatma Al-Blushi, member of the Supreme Council for Women who represented the Council in the work of the session, appreciated the joint Arab effort to enrich the dialogue on everything related to women in the Arab countries and to invest in the cumulative qualitative experiences shared to respond in a proactive and flexible manner to integrate the needs of women and families as well as to develop the strategies and action plans that would preserve the gains achieved by Arab women. She also emphasized that the Council was able to achieve a qualitative impact and sustainable progress in the field of gender balance and move to the stage of generalizing successful national experiences and highlighting best practices at the regional and international levels. The committee approved the observations of the Supreme Council for Women regarding the draft Arab Statement of the Commission on the Status of Women 68, whose activities will be held at the United Nations headquarters in New York in the U.S. during the period from the 11th to the 22nd of March. The celebration of the World Civil Defense Day falls on the 1st of March every year and comes as an additional milestone in highlighting the significant role of the civil defense in protecting lives, properties, and preserving the national resources. In this context, the International Civil Protection Organization has designated the slogan Innovative Technologies in Civil Defense to be the theme for this year's World Civil Defense. The theme of this year encompasses several key roles of civil defense in the field of information technology artificial intelligence monitoring and analysis through the use of information technology are considered effective means to mitigate emergency risks, contribute to incident management and expedite recovery while ensuring efficiency and prompt response. Ensuring the public safety in all the areas is a noble objective that civil defense strives to achieve. It is a security duty that it upholds under all circumstances as public safety is one of the key elements in the process of sustainable development and safeguarding the community as a whole.
And to speak more about that, we have with us on the phone from the Ministry of Interior's Head of Inspection Division at the General Directorate of Civil Defense, Major Engineer Mohammed Ahmed Rabar. Hello, Major Mohammed. Hello. Welcome uh, to the news and marking the World Civil Defense Day. Can you tell us more about this year's slogan and what it reflects? Initially, I'd like to thank you for providing this opportunity for us to share with you and celebrate the International Civil Protection Day. So this year's slogan is the innovative technologies in the use of civil defense. In this occasion, I'd like to highlight some of the most essential accomplishments that we've reached and these accomplishments, our accomplishments aimed in investing and building sustainable and a safe ecosystem within the Kingdom of Bahrain. These are, and most importantly, is being awarded with a prestigious seat as a member of the Executive Council Board of the International Civil Defense Organization, which is an international organization which compromises of most of the countries in the world. I'd like to also emphasize that we are a strategic economic partner with the private sector here in the Kingdom of Bahrain. And currently, we're liaising with a lot of international boards and associations, such as the NFPA and Board, to enhance the safety sector. In addition, we have digitalized around 85% of our services to the public. And in this year, our service center was awarded with a gold evaluation trophy for serving the public and attending to their needs professionally. Can you elaborate on the importance of the significance of modern equipment within the framework of civil defense work in Bahrain? So technology is allowing us and helping us in achieving several benchmarks in various stages. Those benchmarks are pre, during, and post incidents. We're laser focused on areas such as community engagement by building and conducting specialized courses and workshops. So some of those courses target areas are pre-incidents and some of those workshops such as emergency preparedness and recovery that focuses on lessons learned and dealing with incidents and post-incidents as well. In addition, we've launched this year the, web, the website uh, which is the National Platform for Civil Protection which is there to engage the community and spread awareness in relevant topics. Now we're utilizing also AI, which is a trendy topic, to reach engineering solutions faster. And that bridges the gap between the engineering and technical firms and other authority having jurisdiction governmental bodies in Bahrain. Moreover, our vehicles are provided with the latest and smartest equipment that allows our personnel to operate safely and effectively in different incidents. Thank you, Major Mohammed, for these valuable contribution and happy Civil Defense Day.